Hi, I'm Henrik, the founder of Sangrak Norway. In this video, we will compare some different patterns from the cookie one and the ITF. And the pattern we are going to see some techniques from is Tebek Pumse and Wonio Tur. And with me today, I have my good friend Roy. Yes, I'm Roy from Taekwondo ITF. And uh, as Henrik said, we're going to take a look at uh, some patterns and uh, do some comparison. So hang in there. Okay, this sequence is from Tebek Pumse, and it's Pumse for around the second and third down. I start in Tikkobi. Walk. One, two, three. And with normal speed. You recognize it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We have a Munio, which is a green dot pattern. Just like this. One. Three. Cool. Same movements. Same, same, but different. So, uh, if you look, uh, we talk about sign movement later. Yeah. Uh, so the first movement is. Um, you did uh, this. Right, I twisted this way. Yeah, mm -hmm. we twist that way. So that's the only difference. Yeah. It's the first hand. Yeah, actually it is. And the second one was you did with closed fist. Yes. And I did it open. Yes. And did you do which, which line to the. Around 45% angle out here. Okay. We, we are, have something we call chest line. Yes. It goes here. And if I'm in the uh, ninja sogi, which is an L stance, same as your uh, tweet kubi. Tweet kubi, yes. Uh, I have my stance like this, and I'm half half facing. Mm -hmm. And when I'm half facing for the full facing, it's in the strikes uh, stops in chest line. And this one is uh, same. Yeah, but I think that's that is actually more or less yeah. identical. Just this one. And uh, you kept your position. Yes. And uh, we change from L stance to fixed stance, right? Which is uh, so this one is uh, seventy percent on the back leg. Yes. And I change to fifty-fifty. Okay. Exactly the same, only that much uh, wider. Right. And that stance we don't have in the Q one style. So. Uh, okay. So this one is just you just right to generate more power. Probably. Mm -hmm. What we emphasize on the stance there is that you have to have the loose hip to get the power in, so the hip should work in the whole time. Yeah. So I think that is saving your side. Yes. So now we are going to uh, take a look at some applications for this movement. And uh, I would uh, uh, be very clear about that the applications can be many things. Yes, I okay? agree. So uh, we have a uh, Loosen up this uh, because I'm gonna. So I don't uh, ruin his uh, uniform. So let's uh, take uh, one here. Yeah. Um, opening up, pulling this in with a strike. I push his face away, then punch. So slow no motion here. It's very similar to a judo hold. And hold here somewhere. I can also hold. His wrist here. Wrist. Dobok. Dobok. Low target. So if I take this one as a one, and I pull this one that way, and pull him in, strike. It can be the heel of the hand on the jaw, or it can be the, the sokal in the neck or the, uh, the sombadak in the face. So all these are good. Okay. From here, push his fa face away, pull him in, and as I go out in the fixed stance, I hit the jaw here. So that's one solution. I like it. Yeah. Cool. Uh, another one, we can check that on, so it looks better on the camera. Yeah. 
We have this uh, position from Vonio. This is uh, the monk salute. So it's uh, this is uh, Vonio was uh, the famous monk who introduced uh, Buddhism to Silla dynasty. But also you can be a wrist lock here. So the opening I have a strike and I lift this just like I did with the other one. From here I can go for this one. So crossing my arms over and I do a lock close like that. If I strike it through, it will go down. And we keep this open up and go for the same strike as I pull with the tongue is on here. That's another solution. Yeah, and that's interesting because you have the wrist locks in the in the applications. Yeah, it's a little spiced. Twist. Yeah. Cool. I really like those applications. I have a little bit of a twist. So the first one I'm thinking of is if you uh, come to me with a haymaker, I will flinch automatically. And then I use this hand around to lock and see we have this position. So in this application, this is not a block. This is me set, setting up for a strike on the collarbone or on the temple of the head. And the next thing that happens after I have done this strike, I want to move him away. So now I go in and finish with that last punch. So one more time. I flinch, I lock his arm and I'm chambering up the, the punch and I go for the collarbone or the head and then the last strike to get him away. It can be at the, in the body or it can be to the head. So that is one of my solutions for this technique. Hmm. The other one is if, I get, uh, if you are trying to choke me. I'm using this technique and the twist on the, on the uh, wrist is making me stronger. So I'm going in, twisting up his arms. Now with this, I grab somewhere where I can get a grab. And same way, I use this as a counter attack and then move him away with a punch. So that is two of my variations. Probably there is so many other ways to do it. Uh, yeah, it's planning. So maybe you can come up with some more solution and uh, tell us in the comment field. Yeah. I see when you do the technique, you're doing uh, what you call the sine wave. And yeah. for many people, that is the major difference between my style and your style. So how do you explain that sine wave? Yeah, it's a contro controversial uh, topic, actually. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it's not very, it's not very uh, advanced, really. It's more like that you have a, a drop or a collapse in the, the, the point of impact on every technique, right. or almost every technique in the patterns. So, uh, like uh, the application we did, for example, when we did uh, uh, this one, yep. I had your arm, uh, uh, and if, uh, if I have a, a drop mm -hmm. the central mass, mm -hmm. uh, so to get, when you go up, you, you uh, chamber, right, and you drop into the technique. Right. So it's more like uh, using uh, gravity to uh, enhance the power of the technique with hips, breathing techniques, and uh, the tension of the muscles. But that is actually not that uh, different from what we are doing. I think it's more visual when you see uh, ITF uh, tour. Yeah. But also in a, in a cookie wall technique, you are supposed to have that internal drop. To, to like set up your balance. So when I go here, I use this, but I also feel that I'm going down. So, so I think it is more or less the same. It is easier to, to see it in your form. Yeah. And in my form, you have to search for it more internally. So again, we are more alike than we know. Mm -hmm. There's another thing that, uh, like uh, if, you, if you pull guard, yeah. and uh, the, the, the basic application of uh, this one, mm -hmm. So if if I have your wrist there, yeah. I want to wait on you. Right. So I get remember Star Wars. Mm -hmm. I got higher ground. Right. The duel between uh, Obi Wan and uh, Anakin. Yeah. So if you have the high ground, yeah, you have the the, uh, the tactical uh, advantage, right? I don't know if this is clear, but there is a principle 
of uh, putting your weight on your opponent. Right. Let your opponent carry your weight. Right. Uh, so if I take the high ground and I go, I'm for, and if I get a hold here, yeah. like I call hockey punch. Yeah. It can be if you put, put your guard off and I, I get a hold of this one and you tense it up. Yeah. I put my weight on it. Right. A little. So I'm hanging on. Yeah. And as I go. Yeah. This one is moving back and forward. Yeah. It can be somewhere. And if you cover up the backhand, pull it over and I change side, right? Right. So the basic punching. So I'm climbing on you. Right. Putting my weight on you. Yeah. So the point of impact, I have a drop here as well. Right. Not just, it's not just this one having weight behind it in the drop. But it's also when I'm pulling, pulling you down with me in the room. Mm. So I'm putting my weight on you. Mm. And, and that actually prevents me from uh, being able to counterattack because I yes. have to stabilize the balance all the time. It's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I like it. And also, we can see this thing actually in Hapkido or other grappling arts. You, you need the impact of the body to, to get that point. And a basic boxing as well. Yeah. Uh, a good box, uh, boxing coach will tell you to sit in your punch. Right. So uh, it's the same principle. Yeah. yeah. You see it in many kung fu styles as well. Mm. Tai Chi is very. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, you have to drop to uh, drop balance. Yeah. Yes. And 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 uh, the yin and yang mm. of. Uh, complete or not complete, but relaxation, tension. Mm. High, down, right, up, down. Yeah. So, uh, actually, I was training with a Tai Chi master called William Chen, mm -hmm. and he went around hitting us with his slap. Yeah. And then I was like, oops, did I wake you? Because that is a little bit the feeling you should have from the collapse to waking up and to, to go to sleep again. Yeah. And then you have the yin and yang moving. Yeah. There's another uh, thing as well. Uh, uh, you've been uh, with, uh, with me on the Tony Blauer uh, courses. Yes. And uh, uh, Tony Blauer uh, has the spear system, which uh, uh, has the flinch mm -hmm. response as uh, the core of the system. Right. And also here, you have uh, when you flinch, the natural thing for the body to do is to stretch your legs when you flinch. Mm -hmm. You go like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah you stick it up. Yeah. yeah. And Sometimes you go to drop, yeah. depends on the stimulus, the stimulus where it comes from. Uh, so when I'm here, I have a, a chamber right. for the impact. Yeah. Um, so it's a lot of uh, things in the flinch as well. When mm -hmm. you tension up mm -hmm. and you strike. Mm -hmm. What strikes me here is that actually what we are doing is more or less the same. It's just a little bit different in how we actually show it with our body. Because if you do the, all the technique also in the Kokiwon Taekwondo, you, have, you are supposed to be relaxed and, and drop your balance, but it's not that visual. So I think we're doing the same actually. I hope you enjoyed this video of us rambling about our different styles and uh, hopefully we also can show that even though we are quite different in how the technique is performed, it is the same basic, it is the same philosophy behind the basic. So if you have any other suggestion or other things you think that the differences is actually needing to be the same, leave a comment in the comment field and don't forget to subscribe. And thank you for watching, see you in the next video.